last week. <laughs> oh, that was also the hi was that the highlight? Oh yeah, I cut that up as a highlight on the Twitch. I don't know if you ever see that. Yeah, it's probably good. This, I did go back. Okay, we just talked about this. <laughs> They're playing magic cards. Excellent. Uh, but yeah, guys, welcome back to another Friday Night Magic tournament from Lost Legion Games and Comics in South Charleston, West Virginia. My name, as always, is Zachary Evans. I'm joined in round one by Garrett Meadows. He has a buy tonight. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on. We're already into our round one coverage. We've got four rounds of Swiss tonight, followed by a cut to top eight. I think there are 25, 20, 25 players in the tournament tonight, I think. Uh, but anyway, Brandon Gibbs on the left playing Mono Blue Devotion. Pretty stock list. I know there's several variations of it, but there's nothing too particularly different that you shouldn't expect to see out of this deck. And his opponent is Scotty Wright of the infamous Wright Brother tandem. And in surprising no one, they are playing some combination of blue-white control. This week, Scotty is playing actual blue-white control. Not splashing it for any, uh, any uh, other color for Kiora. As a small child just walked in here. <laughs> it, was, it was Jordan's son. Oh. Uh, but literally just a small child walked in. But uh, Scotty played Bant last week. His brother's playing Esper. Scotty has toyed around with... Uh, like American control before too. This week just on plain old blue white. As we see, Brandon starting to beat down with a judge's familiar and a muta vault. And Scotty just content too. Scotty's found this table about four times now. Uh, yeah, that's what he. Yeah. <laughs> now what are you gonna do? So that Esper lane just in there for scrying. Uh, it could also be for well, like he two could, or three black cards on the sideboard. Yeah, like a lot of them play like three copies of like Dark Betrayal or Doom some Blade Doomblade or effect. Like yeah. yeah. So that's that's true, but we'll call it blue white. I allow myself to leave it as blue white. Um, but like I said, four rounds of, turn, uh, of the tournament tonight. This is also as we see Brandon get his uh, turn four Thassa dissolve. Tonight is the last uh, Friday of the month, which means the F and M Championship for the month. So Garrett is here tonight on a buy because you won one of the previous F and Ms. I won last week. You won last week. Logan Cutlip uh, had one earlier, so he has a buy as well. And then this is a double payout FNM, so have some players who don't normally play here make the trip out. Um, so it should be should be some good magic. Put five bucks in the pool and you, you get four packs. Yep. Five bucks in entries equals four packs of prize supports. So Scotty's got to be pretty thrilled about where the game has gone so far. It's going to be difficult to deal with those two Muna Vaults, but uh, otherwise he's... Basically, on his fifth turn, having only taken six damage and facing down a judge is familiar. Mm -hmm. see. Divination. Divination. That card always throws me for a loop because I see it and I'm like, well, what is this yeah. new card? Yeah, in this if I see this unknown card, I'm like, yeah, that's Divination. <laughs> and he actually drew two cards. Yes, I got it right. <laughs> now, I will, only card I, don't know. I will say they've printed that card a bunch. I think there's three arts between the. It's been in every limited format for about the past 18 months. Um, but the new one is the best art, probably by far. Yeah. It's, it's a good looking foil, too. No, Scotty was uh, ch chasing it down desperately for his popper or er, peasant cube. Yeah, there was a, uh, there's even a variant in um, Dragon's Maze, Pilfer Plans, which is draw two, draw two. So divination has been seen everywhere. So Scotty's going to offer up the trade here with the Muta Vault, which I I'm, I mean, if I'm Scotty, I'm not excited to stone ring myself. Especially not now that uh, Brandon has loaded up with uh, the Jace here. Yeah, not attacking but, with the other Muta Vault was cursing on that he had something. Yes. But, <laughs> but it could have also been a Bident. And, and then Scotty also, depending on his draw, if you don't have an answer, as we see the Factor Fiction split of Tidebinder, Master of Waves, and a land, so Scotty's going to go Master or No here, which seems fine. Yeah. Because Master is clearly the, the choice. Well, and for Brandon, you have to think that... Scotty doesn't have a last breath, or mm -hmm. else your Muta Vault would have just got last breath. Yeah. That's exactly correct. We see Scotty draw a D Sphere, which is the perfect answer. And it's, but but uh, it also depends on his draw here. He's obviously choked on lands. We're going to D Sphere the Jace, I would think, and then, uh, then pray that he can draw some kind of answer here, because he's going to take 3 down to 11 off of the. Well, no, the Muta Vault can't attack this turn unless Braden has a 6 land. Because you know he's going to want to cast that master with Scotty tap low. No, he goes up the Biden. So valuing the Biden more than the master of ways, which I think is fine. Uh, I did not, obviously not realizing he had a Biden in hand, but uh, the Biden is going to be a better long-term solution to this game than uh, 
than the master is. Scotty has a million ways of dealing with master and only three left in his deck to deal with that uh, bite in. So Scotty does find his fifth land. It is a temple. Did you see if he scried or not? There's the last breath. I did not see if he scried or not. But Ram drawing the land there is very good. Uh, that let him uh, attack with his Mutabot and then Treasure Familiar, which are obviously very high value cards now that he has the bite in play. Mm -hmm. And then unless you have this follow up turn of uh, Nightfall Spectre. So he's sandbagging that uh, Master Waves to try and get a very large devotion count. Mm -hmm. um, and we see Scotty does draw the Supreme Verdict here. And it also. With the Biden in play, forces Scotty to make plays like yeah, this, it's knowing like the, that there's a Master Waves on, on, on deck. Yeah, it's interesting because it's in the same scenario as we've talked about before. Like um, I equate it to the old Zendikar mono red decks, where sometimes you just play a turn one Goblin Guide and make the blue white deck answer it, because there are situations in which they have to sometimes Day of Judgment away. There's no point in playing something else until they deal with it, and the Biden allows even something as innocuous as a Judge's Familiar to be a threat because for every turn you don't deal with it, it's just going to keep replacing it, so. So we play Coffin Raptor, and then Master Waves to double Vault of Coffin Raptor and add a Devotion. And now Scotty's dead on board. <laughs> Question in the chat. I think he has Faded Retribution, so if he can draw a seventh land, he's good here. Um, Question in the chat asking what the card that Scotty cast on his last turn. That was a Last Breath. Old Last Breath, or semi-old Last Breath. Mm -hmm. Not the oldest of Last Breaths. Last Breath is a very fair card. Mm -hmm. So does he have another Divination here? Yep. I guess you're hoping for a Land Verdict. Yep. Uh, well, he drew an Elixir. Is that relevant? I don't know. Buy him a turn. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, yeah, so that'll go up to 17, so it'll survive at 6, even if we evolve the Cloudfin Raptor again somehow. Mm -hmm. But uh, Brandon's going to draw six cars this way. I mean, at this stage in the game, like, every card in Scotty's deck is just better than every card in Brandon's deck, so if we have a, even if he draws them, he's going to be able to cast them effectively one at a time. So Scotty can still beat this draw six, you know, mind spring for six, but right. it's not going to be comfortable by any means. I said my math wrong there, because he survives at four. Not surprisingly, Brandon finds a, a six land in that giant hand he has. Is Reliquary Tower legal in <laughs> standard? <laughs> Another he printed M13. There's no uh, max man size card to the standard currently. Except for uh, Enter the Infinite. Which lets you have a maximum man size of your deck for one turn. I'm very familiar with that. <laughs> Are you, are you familiar with the, uh, the Borgamos combo deck in Sander? <laughs> no. With Possibility Storm? Uh, you should look into it. Alright. Jace. Jace. That's, uh, that's going to factor fiction and hopefully try to find a D-Sphere. Uh, it finds... <laughs> yep. yep. So Scotty digging for an answer, he basically needed a land D-Sphere there, right? Yeah. D-Sphere was the next card it looked like. But, uh, Scotty... <laughs> Scotty lost that game, it seems to me, like the same way every control deck loses every game. Got stuck on lands. Yeah. You know, he did make the conscious choice to trade out for Muta Vault, and while that might seem in retrospect to have not been the line he wanted to choose, he also would have just probably died to that Muta Vault after a while, because he did have, landed, Brandon did have two, right. and they were uh, making short work of his life total, so. Boop, boop, boop. So game two underway here. Both players on a mold of six. Scotty starting off with a scry off Temple of Deceit. And this is that infamous point we talk about in uh, every time we see this matchup, where Scotty has brought in cards that make his deck better. And then Brandon is, is diluting his deck to try and compete with the card advantage and uh, extra removal out of Scotty's deck. So Brandon's starting off as best as he can hope. I guess a Cloudfin Raptor is the only better start here, but... We once again see the the opposite of power out of the mono blue deck playing garbage draft leavings, <laughs> so that make your uh, your uh, Thassa and your 
Master of Waves better. Quick question in the chat. Um, talking about Roman showing up in the new dual deck and whether or not that means it will be in Journey to Nyx. There is no... Uh, there is no guarantee of that. So we get hit by the uh, Judges from there again, and we do blade the, the Grizzly Bear. I, mean, I know we talk about this all the time, and I'm sure people are tired of me saying it if they if we watch with any regularity, but it just shows you how good a card Thassa is and how good a card Master of Waves is that this deck would play. Like, it would leave in Grizzly Bear against a deck that has infinite removal. I uh, I was looking for alternative cards. I, I looked on Gatherer, uh, searched for blue creatures in mm -hmm. Standard. <laughs> These are literally the best blue creatures. It's not like it's not like you have an option. Mm -hmm. um, your only other option for one drop is Fairy Imposter, which is bounce a dude, or you have to sacrifice it. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> <laughs> and and to be fair, we see Doomblade take out the Muta Vault here. Um, Tide Binder Mage occasionally, when you play a green deck, it's amazing. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, it's like a fiend hunter. But then, <laughs> but a lot of the times it's awful, and. Um, Frostburn Weird, actually a pretty good card. Mm -hmm. Frostburn Weird is, is a card that's got some legs on it, but, uh, you know, turn turn 20 Cloudfin Raptors or Tidebinder Mage against a, a non-blue, de a non-green deck are not that great. So we see Scotty miss his land drop again here? Mm-hmm. And he only but, has one white. But Brandon also missing on his land drop. We're Brandon getting to scry every time. Yeah, Brandon with the turn three Thassa. It's the most important play in this entire matchup. Uh, who cares if it ever attacks? Just the the effective card advantage that you get by able to, being able to scry away a bunch of garbage. The table is very bouncy tonight. It is. Yep. Well, so this is Jace. Minus two here. D Sphere, Jace, Last Breath. We can't uh, minus here because Thass is already active. We were basically caught with our pants down here. We can't. Whatever Brandon's going to do is going to resolve because we're we're tapped out. But uh, are you going to give him Jason or removal spell? I'm giving two removal spells since you're relying heavily on this Thassa. I would give him Jace and the Last Breath yeah. versus the D Sphere. Because he's never going to have time to cast that second Jace. No. Uh, the D Sphere is the most important card in that split. Did we forget? I think you just uh, attack the Jace with the Judges from over here and then go after Scotty for seven. Sure. Which yeah, because you give you a card off the Night Boss Factory too. Right, and and you also don't care about Jace necessarily dying. You just want to keep him from drawing that card, drawing those cards off the uh, minus ability. It's an excellent point. Someone in the chat asking about what do you think about a white splash for Ifara and D Sphere? Well, I know there's actually several decks I've seen that splash for white. We had another player in our uh, top eight at the States tournament that was splashing white for D Sphere in his mono blue deck. Kill him the Jace with the Spectre and then uh, pop him Scotty for six. Mm -hmm. Which will allow the uh, judges from there to attack this next turn. Do you play anything here? I don't think I play anything. Unless it's a Jace or a Biden, I wouldn't. Yeah, it has to be a non-creature spell. Well, no. Uh, we know that uh, Scotty hasn't had a second white land, mm -hmm. so he could easily rip a verdict. But we also just gave him two removal spells, so if we're playing around him not having a second white land, mm -hmm. you just go ahead and flood the board because two of your creatures are dying next turn. Yeah, so there's another Night Bell Spectre. Mm -hmm. I know there's a Jace. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, the Nyctos. Yeah, well, he played a Nyctos this turn, so activate the Nyctos for five, so he's actually floating one here. Two lands are a Night Veil Spectre. Seems like a pretty obvious choice. Yeah, so I really like the uh, play of Chase here. Because <laughs> now this Detention Sphere is going to either have to go after that Chase, or no, the Detention Sphere is going to have to go after Thassa. Last game. So Sky could just never get any business going. Uh, yeah, he that was a mold of six on the play, but uh, and to be fair, he did have lands. He just didn't have enough of them, and he didn't have the right mana sources, uh, right, right colors, I should say. But 
So Mono Blue takes down round one. Well, we got 25 minutes left in the round, so we might be able to get another match to move. So we're going to figure out what I'm going to play tonight. Okay, that's probably an important thing that you should do. Let me go see if we can find another match, and we'll be right back.